My name's Georgia, and I'm the daughter of Sri Lankan and English immigrants to Australia, and I'm now also a proud American citizen. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we have the honour of recording and producing this episode of Talking and Stuff, the Achiman and Tongva people, and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. You're listening to Talking and Stuff, a podcast for younger folks to talk about real stuff. The stuff that they want to talk about and think about and even sometimes just laugh about in a safe place. It's a place for the stuff that isn't easy. The stuff that is confusing, that hurts, that's a bit scary or that you wish more folks would talk about. Some of the things we do talk about might bring up a lot of feelings and thoughts for you. If anything you hear here worries you, please reach out to someone you trust and tell them how you're feeling. If you aren't sure who to reach out to, please reach out to me via the email in the show description. We are here for you and you are never alone. Thank you for joining us and listening. We love having you here. And if you ever have something you'd like to share, we would love to talk with you too. Cool. So Hi. Hi. <laughs> good, how are you? Pretty good. Awesome. So just first for the camera and everything, mm -hmm. your name and age. My name's Logan. I'm uh, 16 years old and I'm from Carlsbad. Perfect. And Carlsbad is in California. Yeah. Just for everybody. It's like, what? Yeah. I've never heard of that one before. <laughs> Small um, town. Like Beach Town, yeah? Yeah, exactly. It's like this. Sacramento. Yeah. Have you lived in this part of the world all your life? Yeah, basically. I've always lived in Southern California. Always grew up here. It's always been fun. Yeah. Sunny always. Loved it always. Right, gorgeous. Yeah, We're so exactly. lucky. We're so lucky. Mm -hmm. um, now, you and I met years ago. Yeah, I was like eight at Cap Camp. Yeah. Was it in New York? Maybe. Did you go to the... Yeah, it was in we New York, went in the New York, so. up in yeah. the Catskills. Mm -hmm. I was like, no, I was younger then. I think I was like seven, maybe six. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Because that was my memory of you was like a little person. A little boy, yeah. And then I saw you this oh, year. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> again, again. I was like, hang on. Yeah. How tall are you now? Uh, six, two, six, three, I think, maybe. Is I that... Don't know, I haven't measured. Are you tall in your class? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so but everybody's like... tall too, so it's kind of... Like, I, yeah, I feel like people are getting taller. Yeah, no, for sure. Like, I, like it used to be like in middle school, I was the tallest one, but everybody grew in high school. Yeah. So it's kind of like six, everybody's six foot about. Wow. But I'm still taller. Yes. <laughs> and now you obviously stand out for other reasons as well. Oh, yeah. um, hence why we know each other. Mm -hmm. Which is, yeah, it's yeah. not the whole reason we're here today, but definitely makes us connected. Yeah. So when did you get alopecia? Uh, I was five in okay. ele uh, elementary, kindergarten. Did it all happen very fast or? Yeah and no. It kind of came out in patches first because I was just brushing my hair and then it started coming out in patches and then we just shaved it all off at once because it mm. looked just raggedy. So yeah. you farted the patchy gang. Yeah. Another one we had uh, Haley on a previous Haley. episode who's a patchy as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm representing all the patchies. Nice. I feel like the universalists get all the attention. Yeah. Because well, <laughs> I think they stand out the most. Yeah, they do. They do. But so okay, so you lost it at five. Has it come and gone for you? Uh, yes, it did. Uh, it came back a little bit, but it was just like this fuzzy stuff, like how it is right now. Yeah, it wasn't anything good. So I had it for like a year, and then I just shaved it off again. And then I've been bald since. How do you feel about that? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I I don't hate it, but I also don't like it. It's kind of a hate, love and hate relationship because yeah. you gotta accept it because you're not gonna enjoy anything if you don't accept it. So that's pretty true. Yeah. Now with the accepting though, because mm -hmm. you're right. Like at some point we just have to let go. Yeah. And like be like, okay, this is what is happening. Exactly. However, I don't know about you, but mm -hmm. for me, like some days that's easier to do. Yeah. Than others. It is. That, exactly. I think that is the same way. Like at school, sometimes I'll be like very confident, outgoing. And then the other days I'll be like just to myself and just yeah. do school. Do you think that that's hair related or is that just kind of life related? Um, I think both. I think uh, being bald in high school is definitely odd and I, you stand out a lot. And I think, I don't, 
I've heard I just look more intimidating, so I don't know. It's it just like... That's an interesting one. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So uh, people say I look like I'm 22 and stuff, so... It's kind of, it's hard because you look older, but yeah. um, you get around it. Have people ever said anything or what have people been like about it? Uh, I've been bullied. I've, I mean, it comes with it, but uh, yeah, it's just bullying really. People accept it too. You said like that you. you've been bullied like you were saying, I've eaten bread. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you were so... Yeah, that happened. Is that how you feel? Was it crappy at the time? Yeah, it was crappy at the time, but I'm gonna be honest. I, one of my the, bull, the kids that bullied me is one of my best friends now. No it's way. Just hilarious. My friend Kieran. Shout out to Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> um, Look, you could be a bully's best friend too. Exactly. No, but uh. How, okay, tell me that story. How did that? Well, I mean, I don't think I think he was just teasing me. It wasn't like bullying. It was just middle school things in sixth grade. Yeah. New school, and I was bald, so. Kids are gonna be kids, um, but eventually we just got close because we got in the same friend group and just became really good friends like during quarantine and That's all that. Interesting. Yeah, it is. I've, everybody finds that really interesting, like my parents. I, but I don't. I find it interesting, but I'm not surprised. Yeah. I think I said at camp this exact thing that like the kid that bullies you could turn out to be your best exactly. friend because they're the person that's willing to talk to you yeah. and willing to like mm -hmm. ask questions and exactly. i personally love those friends that yeah. are like yeah you don't look good in that yeah you and know they, yeah and they, they're real with you they're yeah. not like telling you everything you want to hear basically exactly yeah so if you can not that you should be friends with every bully yeah exactly but like if you can take that bully for what they are and if it's not that mean if it's not then it could be a sign that they actually like you mm -hmm. and like are trying to yeah and you can turn it into a good experience yeah like make good friends like you and karen yeah exactly oh that's so that's a thank you for sharing that because yeah. i've had that theory for a long time that bullies aren't always bad no and i don't think it was i wouldn't even call it bullying it was just teasing. teasing yeah it was just in the moment but um yeah no i think bullies definitely can turn out to be good friends eventually yeah. if it works out like if everything aligns correctly totally yeah so you wear um beanies now sometimes yeah i like to wear beanies just because sunburns mainly because i mean i get sunburned all the time and my head feels and this fuzz i'm too lazy to cut it every single day so i just wear a beanie fair enough it you makes me confident beanie, yeah actually. thank you okay i was yeah. kind of impressed at camp i was like it's looking real cool. It <laughs> does you. go with your look. Thank you. Yeah, I now, like it. I like wearing beanies. They're good. Now, I have to ask a bit of a personal but funny question mm -hmm. for me. At camp, I saw you, you were hanging out with a couple of the girls. I won't mention their names just in case I don't have them. You know, but like you immediately, I saw you have like a really tight relationship mm -hmm. with some of the girls yeah. from camp. So mm -hmm. they had alopecia as well. Yeah. But it just made me so happy to see you guys bond so quickly. Mm -hmm. Is that something that's normal for you? Like are you quick yeah. to make friends and stuff like I'm that? I'm quick to make friends, but I felt like that was a lot different because we all had the same experiences and we felt alike. So it just felt a lot easier to get into it and yeah. talk. That must be kind of nice to just, oh, yeah. especially because they're super cute as well. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> there was, I was like, God, I want to keep on wanting to say their names. They're just so pretty and so mm -hmm. cute. And you guys were like a, just like tight. Yeah, no, it was a good trio. It was fun. That is good. Yeah, no, we hung out the whole trip basically. Yeah. Except for the, when we were talking to the little ones. Yeah. Yeah. Which was also great that you no, guys that were was doing fun. that. That was so cool. No, there were so many nice kids there. Yeah. And they fun. look up to you. Yeah. No. That's what's so Yeah, cool. it was nice makes me happy mm -hmm. you said you're quick to make friends mm -hmm. talk to me about school and and how would you describe yourself at school like uh i don't i'm not i'm not a fan of everybody at my school i mean i like people more outside of school i like just to go out and meet people outside oh, really? of school yeah no school i like school and i have friends in school but it's high school you know so it's kind of it's not the most fun thing. It's I feel kind of like that needed to be like hashtag high school. Yeah, exactly. Like, what do you need me to say? It's high school. Yeah, no, but at high school, I'm, I talk to all my friends, hang out with everybody. We all we go we go out to lunch all the time because uh, we have uh, you get free to lunch. go out. Yeah, free lunch. So we got forty five minutes to just go lunch. That's so cool. Yeah, and we just hang out in the parking lot sometimes. We do barbecues. It's cool. Really? Yeah, because people we have stoves and stuff that people just bring in with like in the back of their trucks. We'll do like hamburgers or hot dogs because our food's so bad. You're so okay, yeah. 
Food, school, school taught, food it, is just. Yeah, it costs two dollars to make one lunch at our school, and mm -hmm. then they charge us like four bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, it's a scam. And the food is disgusting. Yeah, no, it's all frozen, all put in a microwave. I've seen it; it's yeah. terrible. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely grow from your cars. No, yeah. In Australia, we didn't drive at school really, like unless because you have to wait till you turn eighteen. Eighteen, right? Yeah, yeah. there's a lot more driving in the laws yeah. there with like licenses and like all performance. That stuff. Yeah. So we never had like driving to school really. Like yeah. there was a few year twelve kids that got their license and they would drive, but that was like the most exciting mm -hmm. thing. That was just like everyone driving, yeah. being able to put a grill in the back of your truck. Exactly. Yeah. That's so cool. I don't know. It is. I haven't got my license yet. I need to start Not here. Almost there. Yeah. No, I need to. But when can you start driving here? Um, I can get it now. I've just been lazy for about you're a year. 15? I'm sixteen. Oh, yeah. why did I? <laughs> it's okay. Then that makes sense. I was yeah. like, I thought I was 60. Yeah, and no, I'm 60. It is. Why yeah. haven't you done it? Um, I just haven't needed to, really. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't had an interest. That's I mean, I. it's probably good to get it, but I need, I'm need. i getting it soon. I already felt it once. Though, yeah. So. Okay. so I'm waiting again. Okay. Have, okay. Yeah, There's just two. waiting for the schedule to come up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you said you prefer people out of school more. Yeah. No, I have a lot of my outside of my like my cliques outside of school. They all go to different schools. How did you? So that that's hard for me to imagine in Australia. I didn't really know many people outside of my school because uh -huh. I was so involved in school. Yeah. How do you meet people out of school? A lot of it was from middle school, really, and also meeting friends from like through other friends and just coming close with them. Um, a lot of my middle school friends I stayed really close with. Because that was just like really a good tight group. And then quarantine happened. So yeah. we all stayed friends. So it wasn't like we went to high school and found other groups. Of course, yeah. You kind of needed each other. Yeah, day, exactly. Actually. Yeah, exactly. So um, we all stayed really close. And so we all we all go to the separate schools. Like people, there's people I go to Vista, Oceanside, Sage Creek is another high school. Um, but we all hang out, go places, go down to San Diego a lot. Cool. What do you do to hang out? That's always um, fascinates me. Drive around, listen to music, talk. Just hang out, be teenagers. That's so cool. Yeah. I really feel like, it's funny, I've never had this conversation with a teenager that's like being a teenager. Mm -hmm. Watching the American movies that had teenagers in it, they would just drive around and listen to music and stuff. Yeah. And we never did that. Mm -hmm. So I always just thought it was like a movie really? thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised. Australia seems like that, like a rowdy country to like have fun. Yeah. I think maybe I just wasn't cool. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I think we, we went to shopping malls. Uh huh. That was kind of like. That's, yeah, that's how it is still now, kind of. We go to malls a lot, like the Carlsbad one. We yeah. always go to that. Okay. We still do go on hikes. Um, that's cool. I wish yeah. I could have gone on hikes with my friends. Yeah, there's so many good spots around here. It's amazing. Ah, that's so cool. Yeah, we went on a morning one uh, about a month ago. Like 10 of us, we woke up at like 6 in the morning. Just went out into the mountains and hiked. It was fun. That's amazing. Yeah. That's really, yeah, we didn't get to do that. Um, man, you're cooler than me. <laughs> now, uh, sensitive question, mm -hmm. uh, dating. Oh, yeah. Is that something you're doing? Yeah, uh, I try to. I mean, I, it's definitely harder because we're just being bald and being a teenager. But yeah. um, I usually just stick to myself. And if ever uh, women come around, I talk to them. Yeah, but... So you have found a bit of a difference with your yeah no for sure it makes a yeah difference. no for sure but um no was, I still date all the time yeah yeah that's good I mean I'm glad it happens for me I've always sort of said mine was like my man meter mm -hmm. like I could tell if the guy was totally cool with my yeah. hair situation then he was definitely a good guy so. Yeah. Does that apply? Do you feel that too? Yeah, I can definitely tell by body language. Like you can always tell by body language. What do you mean? I don't know, like if a, you can always tell if a girl likes you, like, yeah, that's true. like just by their body language and the way they talk. So, I mean, that's how I usually judge it. So if I don't get a good vibe from them, I usually just move on. Yeah. Exactly. So. That's smart. Yeah. That's what no, you should do in any way. Yeah, exactly. There's no point to chase, like, nobody, if they don't want you, there's no point. Yeah. And I think, like, just not to be weird, but like, okay, you got like ridiculously good eyes. Oh, thank you. And when you have hair, you don't notice that stuff as much. Mm-hmm. You think so? I think it comes out more because really? like, you can change the color and like the brown kind of, I don't mm. know, but that's just me. I don't know. Because your like eyes stand out. They do? Yeah, I think your eyes stand out. Thanks. <laughs> I just 
No, I, it's it's because as I'm talking to you, I'm like, damn, those are some brown eyes. Thank you. Like they're good brown eyes. Thank you. And I feel like my brothers used to say to me when I was bald that they liked it better because they could see my eyes more. Yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, you're probably right. Like when I was thinking about like a camp. Like, blue eyes stand out. Yeah. It's totally, like, so much more when they're bald. Yeah. So. I don't know, there's something about, like, the hair doesn't get in the way. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and it kind of, I don't know. But I think that dating, Conscious. probably for you, mm -hmm. just if I could be like, from someone who's a little older, mm -hmm. you end up finding better quality people, especially as you get older. Yeah, no, because everybody's just being teenagers and being the worst they can possibly be. Exactly. Like, just so, nothing gets worse than right now. Yeah, no, exactly. As so, far as that goes. Yeah, so I'm just doing my own thing. And then... So I moved to ask you a question because of stuff that's gone on. This will obviously put a timestamp on this interview. Uh -huh. But there was some really negative stuff that happened up in LA this week. Oh, really? Do you know about... Mm -hmm. um, there was a high school where there, a, a kid OD'd and oh, died, really? died. And uh, four other kids... Do you have, is there a culture here of drugs and all that sort of stuff? Yeah, there is a big culture. I mean, it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know why people do the stuff they do, at least the hard stuff, like, yeah. like fentanyl and all of that. And that's what this was. That yeah. Was fentanyl. All the, the, all the street pills are just laced always. And it's just terrible. There's pills in general are just terrible for you. Right. I mean, I've had friends that have OD too, sadly. Not fully OD, but like, um, had seizures from doing yeah. drugs. So, it's... what do you do as a friend when that happens? Like, can you talk to them? Do you, um, I mean, I, I never know what to do. You can't really, they're not really responsive because they're just, they're having a seizure and they're oh, right. passed yeah, out. Yeah. And so, they're, I mean, like, it's, it's like, pretty scary. Oh, yeah, no, oh, yeah, them? no. I had a long conversation with one of my friends. She had had something that happened to her at a party. But we just, I just chat with them and let them talk, and then I let them know what usually what happens. I've only yeah. had it happen once, but it was an experience. Yeah. Yeah. Were you scared at the time? Oh yeah, for sure, because I didn't know what was going on. I thought she could have just died. So. <sighs> I mean, I, I didn't, obviously I hadn't asked you your experience with them, so I feel mm -hmm. like I could have walked you into a dangerous territory. Oh, yeah. But I really respect, like, your sort of energy about it mm. is it just it's so upsetting that these things yeah. are so available no it is i mean i don't i don't think there's a way you can get rid of it i mean there's always a way but yeah, yeah. it's it's very easy just type on snapchat really yeah it's easy oh i didn't even know that's how get it just straight to live to your house yeah through snapchat mm -hmm. oh man yeah. Here, my thinking social media is evil in one way, but now oh, it's like it's it's a total black market. You can anything on social media you could probably find wow. if you looked in the right spots. It's crazy. So growing up for me, I think like the the worst that kids were doing was weed. Really? I think I, mean, I was so out of it. I didn't really yeah, know that's what I was that's be. still probably one of the worst. That's like the common one now. I think is weed. Yeah, it's it's legal. Not, yeah okay. exactly. In California, is it legal for kids though? Mm -mm. Oh, no, it's very legal. I think it's well, not very legal, but you get um, there's kids at my school that get caught with it because they do it at school. Oh, okay. So I think I mean you can pedal. smell it. Yeah, it's like it's so funny when people are like, "Oh, I'm just doing it secretly." I'm like, uh, "No, you're not." Yeah, exactly. Because I can, you smell, can smell, smell it from here. Yeah, no. Is that how they get caught? Because it. No, it's usually they like go in the bathrooms because they have like these vape pens. Oh, yeah, yeah. So they're like, so it's just like smells like a vape and it goes away in a second. So they just go in the bathrooms and they just get caught sometimes. Can I ask if you ever vaped? Yeah. I mean, who, yeah. I, have you not? No. Nobody? I mean, I, I'm, I'm like really, I'm a goody too, too. Really? But what, what's it like? It's kind of gross because it's just like chemicals, like all mashed in one thing and it is like. Have you have you you've never tried anything? I've never smoked drunk or drunk drugs. Wow. I know. <laughs> I mean that's that's a good thing. Good for you. Thanks. That's a good thing. Thanks. Um, but it it's like you get dizzy because okay. it's like a I don't it's called a dome. That's what people call it. I don't know why, but I don't know. I don't do it very. Is like, it this is gonna sound this could sound uh -huh. like the most innocent ignorant comment you'll ever hear? Yeah. Is it kind of like that dizziness you get when you have caffeine? Too much caffeine. I don't drink coffee. Oh, see, there you I go. So I don't know. So that's my hard drug. Um, <laughs> used to be. I actually 
went cold turkey yesterday. Good. Oh That's my good. Caffeine. Caffeine's. I, I don't. I don't. I don't it's so bad. Yeah, I don't know if I like caffeine because I just. It's not good for you. No, it's not. It's, it's like, not, kids. Don't no. do caffeine. Mm -mm. Don't do drugs in general. Yeah, don't do drugs or caffeine. Yeah. Um. That's really funny that you're like, you do caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I don't I do the it, right stuff. It makes me just jittery. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't like the way it makes me feel. And I just, I don't know. That's a, that I don't, and I can't, I can't sleep. Yeah, exactly. Okay. It makes me like wide awake. I was up till four because I had a monster. Seriously? Yeah, because we were out and we stopped at a gas station and I just could not sleep. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. I had, and that not being able to sleep when you you obviously want to sleep mm -hmm. and you've taken something like that is so exactly like, like please after body yeah. please go to the head <laughs> i'm ready exactly my mind is ready will you not do this for me yeah <laughs> i don't yes that's why i quit yeah but that's i wondered if the vaping thing but i feel like so i feel like pretty much everyone's vaped yeah now it's oh just yeah I, it's just like a, such a common thing everybody i know but people ready. put weed in it instead as a way to kind of yeah, it's, I don't really know how it works, yeah. but they put like some type of THC into a okay. vape cartridge and it heats it up and it like works as a vape basically. Mm. But yeah. I just, yeah, weed and me don't make sense. Mm -mm. I just don't understand why you would take a drug to be less productive. Yeah, exactly. Basically more no. lazy. Yeah, no, I don't think so. It's kind of, it's a dumb drug. Yeah. Okay, so with everything like you, not that this is all about alopecia, but I feel yeah. like I've got you as an alopecian, so I want to make the most of this yeah. because, as you know, I have a deep belief that alopecians are cooler. Mm -hmm. yeah, so for sure. I can't help that. I think they are too. I think. Uh, so I'm going to use this opportunity to show everybody how cool you are. Um, obviously, having lost your hair at mm -hmm. five and gone through that journey and sort of having to. I mean, every kid at school has to deal with teasing and has to deal with some girls not liking them or some boys not liking them, depending where they yeah. are in that world. Um, but you had like an extra challenge. Mm -hmm. What has, is, is there anything that you would be like, I feel like this is what I've learned from being just a little different. Be confident. Honestly, that's all you can do is just be confident, be yourself. And everyone will like you, basically. I mean, it's just really how it is. It's so it's just sort of claiming. Like, claiming it as your own. Hand. Exactly. Yeah. And just accepting it and embracing it fully. Yeah. I, do you, it's kind of like you were talking about body language. Like, I feel like if you give off the body language of being nervous and mm -hmm. unsure, it's kind of like, what are these, what, what animals? Like dogs, um, they can smell fear. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, I think it's kind of like that too with people. Yeah. But I don't, I don't, I don't know really. So you've noticed the difference, like when you're like, hey, this is who I am. Yeah. People are cool with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, when you, I feel like when I was more uptight, I didn't, you didn't, because I, you wouldn't interact with anyone. Yeah. So it's just no one really knows your name and you That's just kind true. of sit there. So you don't get to feel whether anyone would mm -hmm. want to. Interestingly enough, um, and, Haley was telling me she wore a wig a couple of days at school and then didn't wear it, and she said people um, went that different. Really? She was so surprised, wow. and I was too. Yeah. She was like, "I don't. People didn't actually treat me differently." That's cool. Isn't that cool? That is cool. Yeah. That made me realize that maybe we're deciding that mm -hmm. the world treats us differently. I think. Yeah, you know what? I think so. Because I mean, I before like I would wear hats all the time, and I would never like show my head, and I took it off, and I was just fine. Yeah. And right? ever since, I kind of just never wore, and I didn't really think about it. it yeah. So. I think it's funny, we, I think all people, like regardless of what your hair looks like, mm -hmm. we've all, we all plan on things going worse than they often do. Yeah. That's sort of our I think, yeah. protective. Mm -hmm. I also think we overthink everything, alopecians at least, because yeah. I mean, we've, there's so much stress from, I yeah. mean, our past experiences at least. Yeah. And I think we just dwell on those. And I think also, I don't know about you, but I think parents, because they're worried too. Yeah. That can make it There's harder. Stress. Yeah, I think so too. Um, I mean, my dad's not here, so we'll talk about him. But <laughs> my dad, when my hair first fall, fell out, he was really stressed about it. And he would offer me wigs all the time and try to find a way to cover it. And I think, I don't think he, I think he was, he thought he was trying to be nice and help me out. But I was really, I think he didn't realize it was really stressing me out at the time. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. I, I could see that though. Yeah. Because we want to keep our parents happy as well. Exactly. Yeah. 
So um, when a parent's a worry, that mm -hmm. becomes an extra worry. Yeah. On top of our own worry. Okay. I have that with my mom. Yeah. She's a super warrior. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so much of my life. We've now, I like it because my hair comes and goes too. Yeah. Um, she now knows not to get excited. Mm -hmm. Because it, Cause it can pull out again right and then I feel bad that she's not happy. Yeah, and then it just all goes down. Yeah, that's how my mom is too sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard. It's basically impossible for parents not to worry. Oh, yeah. I mean, if I was a parent, I would worry too if my kid's hair just randomly fell out. Right. This is definitely exactly. odd. I mean, but it is a hard balance because then we hear what they're saying, we yeah. hear their worries, and we start going, oh, really? Maybe there's people something won't accept us? People, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. But I'm glad that you've got to experience yeah. the opposite of that, really, that just people are accepting. chill yeah. about yeah. it all. It's very accepting. Yeah. In elementary, my, um, like, towards the end of it, though, my, because I was just having a rough elementary, and my teacher um, I don't, gave me, like, an interview, kind of, on the school TV. Oh, yeah. And explain my alopecia. And they started a whole, like, um, what's it called? Charity. Oh, no. Nice. And we all, we, done, we raised, like, $1,000 for the cat project. Oh, how cool. Yeah. That's right. So you got a chance to explain it to everyone. Yeah. I think that was, I think explaining it helps a lot, too. Yeah. Because kids don't really know what it is. No kid's going to look at some teenager and be like, oh, yeah, he has alopecia. Yeah. As a teenager, this stupid. Unless. They had you in school. Yeah, like exactly. That's what's yeah. cool about that is now if ever anyone from that school comes across. They know what it is. They'll be yeah. cool that. No, I, I, like um, in elementary, nobody knew what it is. And then like the next week, everyone was like, oh, you have alopecia. That's so cool. That That's really great that they yeah. did that. No, it was good. And, I, be, and I think, I don't know if you've ever, have you experienced that because you've been honest about the thing that's harder for you? Do other people tell you their stuff? Yeah. All the time. Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I, I love people coming to talk to me. I'm always open for people to just come talk. That makes I, me happy. Because I, I know how it is to have problems. So, I mean, my yeah. list, I can always listen. You, I don't know if you know, but that's actually very special. Really? <laughs> yeah. I, like, I, you doing that mm -hmm. for people. I know you're like, ah, oh, just do that. Yeah. But not every person does that for people. Yeah. And has that opportunity. Mm-hmm. So you're, Thank you. you're doing something really helpful and meaningful for people. Thank you. I'm trying yeah. to. It's working. Make it everyone, I try to make everyone happy. I'm not yeah. trying to disappoint anyone or any, make anyone upset. Well, like you said, you know what it's like. Oh, yeah. And I hate sadness. It sucks. So yeah. I mean, why, why have people be sad around you when you can make it better at least a little? Yeah. Even just feeling connected. Yeah, exactly. Can make it better, connection right? is a big thing. I think that helps so much. Just like, like having a connection and letting someone talk. Yeah. It's good. I'm so glad you're doing that. Yeah. Because I think I often say that's our super mm -hmm. power. Because we can't pretend we don't know. Yeah, exactly. It's just, so I hope that you know that every time someone's coming up, you're making a difference for them. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank <laughs> you for being awesome um, and doing it. Do you ever feel like your experience of life has charted a course for where you probably go in your future? Probably. You? Yeah. Um, I don't really have a plan yet, but I, I mean, I kind of have a rough draft. I'm hoping to go into firefighting. Yeah. Um, but see where that goes. That's super cool. Yeah. Do forest firefighting. Talk about helping people. Yeah, exactly. Literally want, running into the fire. Yeah. No. That's amazing. Yeah, no. I want to do forest firefighting, and um, up in Mammoth, they have courses in community college. Wow. Yeah. What is it about fire? Like. It's more of the wilderness aspect. I like just you go out in the middle of the woods, a group of guys, and you just work and chop wood basically and prevent fires. So that's really just, cool. It's a lot of teamwork. A lot it's of hard work, that was yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You build like family relationships in it too. It's yeah. really cool. Now I got into it from this mountain biker that I used to ride with. Um, he rides right back here, but he was a smoke jumper. Oh yeah. And um, he got hurt. Not paralyzed, but like just all of his bones just broken his body, smacked into a tree coming down. Oh, no. So, yeah. No, it's a smoke jumper. That's a person that has to like parachute in. Yeah. yeah. Into like the middle of like a fire. So, he, I don't know what happened. He just jumped and got hit by a tree. 
the um he's I love like, that you met him, heard that story and went, I wanna be a firefighter too. Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> You're like, I wanna I do what he did. No, he was just telling me because that was one of the risks that I mean, there's always risk in that. It's such a riskful job, but yeah. they as well get free everything basically. They pay for all your insurances. And well that's good. Yeah, exactly. And I think there is something about being out in the world with men and just chopping wood. Like yeah. how basic is a group of guys having fun. And, and, you, and you're helping people and yeah. saving the environment because we need to do that clearing out to mm -hmm. keep everything safe. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thank you. And you won't have to worry about singeing your hair. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so that's positive. Yeah. My gosh. That's super cool. Yeah. Um, for anybody, obviously because people come up to you and tell you their mm -hmm. stuff, you would mm -hmm. just celebrate how awesome you are because yeah. of that. <laughs> say someone's listening to this or watching this and they are dealing with something because the bottom line is every teenager has something. something yeah of like course. when people are like gosh it must be hard to be alopecia as mm -hmm. a teenager i'm like i don't know if you've met a teenager yeah it's just hard it's just that that's yeah, just hard it's just hard so taking the hair out of it whatever or well you did take the hair out of it so <laughs> yeah. that's good um but for teenagers that are going through tough stuff that maybe wouldn't be brave enough to reach out to you at school mm -hmm. or just don't know you yet, maybe they'll watch the podcast and reach out to you, yeah. you never know. But what would you say to somebody that is saying, like, life's a little bit... This is the phone. I don't know. That's, so that's the fun. teenager calling to yeah. ask you a question. <laughs> We're very casual here. We've had, all, like, you know, as I said, llamas. So... Llamas. Um, what would you say to somebody that is, well, actually two points to this question. Let's start with the kid first. Mm -hmm. So with the student, with the teenager who's having a tough time, what would be the thing that you would want to say to them? Um, just find someone to talk to. I mean, a, I think there's always someone to talk to. Family, friends. I mean, just try to get it out. I mean, that's the best thing to do. Yeah. It's not good to just hold it in and let it sit there so just letting it out is the best thing really sharing it mm -hmm. just lifts that burden doesn't it uh-huh and setting goals too setting goals oh again. what do you mean by that setting goals i mean if you're just trying to fix yourself or something in your life set a goal to do it goals are amazing just set a reminder or something yeah and you're right i i'm a big goal setter mm -hmm. and i feel like when i've got a problem that i'm not happy with at least if i'm like these are three things I can do yeah. as of tomorrow morning or whatever to change it, then I at least feel like I'm doing something. Exactly. Better. It keeps you on track too, it feels yeah. like. And it doesn't, you don't wander off and do something else. Yeah, and, and later you can look back and be like, tick. Yeah, and then you feel accomplished. Checking off things on my list is like, sometimes I just write things and yep. check them mm -hmm. off. So I understand, yeah, you can feel accomplished. Okay, so the second half of that question that I thought of, mm -hmm. what about, what would you say to parents that are worried about what their kids are going through? Um. Don't push them. Don't like ask them thousands of questions. Let them come to you if they really need to talk. I mean, always ask if they're fine, but don't edge them on to let them tell them tell you something that they don't want to really tell you. Mm -hmm. um, don't stress them out too. And I don't. It's really it. I mean, I think leaving the space open, right? Yeah. Creating a safe. It's hard for parents sometimes because they want to fix. Mm-hmm. But it's almost, I feel like they almost like need to put a sign somewhere in the house. It's like, I'm available to talk when you are. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but I won't mention until then. Yeah, exactly. Because um, sometimes as a kid coming from a teenager, I don't, sometimes it just doesn't feel like my parents want to hear it. So okay. maybe it's good to maybe say it sometimes. I don't know. That's, Not a parent yet. So yeah, no, that's interesting. That's for parents. That's interesting feedback that sometimes you don't think your parents want to. Yeah. But I, I will tell you, I'm pretty sure. Oh yeah. They want to hear. Yeah, no, but, I know that now. Yeah. From ex just from my mom telling me, but um, yeah, no, I think a lot of kids don't realize that their parents are are there for them. Yeah. Well, they but, spend so much time. Yeah, there's always they might be clashing or yeah. something. Yeah. But I think the same thing, like just being honest and talking about it and sharing mm -hmm. can solve so much. Oh that. yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, that can solve so yeah. many problems. Just talking about it because so often you fight about everything else other than the thing that's mm -hmm. going on and if you just talked about a thing none of that fighting would have to happen exactly yeah easier said than done right Con conversation and um 
What's the word? Communication. Communication, thank you. It's one of my favorite yeah, words. Yeah, no, communication is key. That yeah. is for sure. For everything, really. Yeah. Just it is. it is. I think that's an amazing place to leave our discussion. Okay. Communication is key. Communication is key. Everybody. <laughs> um, thank you You're so welcome. much, Logan. Thanks for having me. Ah, oh, such Appreciate a pleasure. Um, thank you for having me in your house. Oh yeah, of course. Um, but this is it's just a joy, like we haven't talked this much ever before, no. so I feel like I've got yeah, to know yeah. you so yeah, well yeah. in the last little bit of time, 33 minutes. Yeah, that's right. So that's you're just an absolute gem and keep, Thank you. keep being who you are in the world because you are helping so many people without even realizing that you are. Thank you. And Thank I think you your sure. confidence in walking through school and life, being mm -hmm. like, yeah, this is my thing is probably inspiring a lot of other young people to not be afraid to just be who they are too. I hope so. I hope it does inspire. I would put money on it. Not that I bet. <laughs> but if I did, I would put money on it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yay. Thanks for listening to Talking and Stuff. All of the young people interviewed have done so at their own choosing and were given final approval on all videos and audio before it was shared. This is their story, their thoughts and feelings, and it is my honor to share them with you all. We share these conversations with love for them, their families, and for all of you. If you don't feel comfy reaching out to us, but do need someone to support, we recommend you call the SMA HSA hotline on 1-800-662-4357. It's free and available to you 24-7.